very much. Thank you, Google Robot. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. We have 20 minutes to talk about and do a live room escape, especially made for the Spark this year. I hope you all enjoy it. Let's begin. Escape from Castle Ramsey, live Google room escape. Uh, if you like the name, I'm very happy. If you don't, it, it, it's very much uh, a name I like, my name. Let me introduce a little bit more about me. My name is Ramsey Ramsey. Great name, thank you, Tate. Uh, my first name and second name are the exact same. Uh, yeah, do with uh, that what you will. I, I very much like my name. I'm in Tokyo, Japan, and I teach computer science, mathematics, uh, the IB, the International Baccalaureate, if you've heard of it before, and English. And I teach in both English and Japanese, uh, with computer science being my main focus. I love video games. I, I have done an innovator project uh, about video games completely. And I can talk about that for a very long time. But today we're going to talk about room escapes, which I also thoroughly enjoy. Uh, I do a lot of different room escapes. I've done a few back in uh, London, the UK, where I'm originally from. But I also do a lot here in Japan. And here are some pictures of uh, some room escapes. On the right hand side, uh, if you are into anime, this is uh, a popular anime turned into a room escape for a one time uh, event. And on the left, which is, I've been to many room escapes and I enjoy them a lot, but this is arguably the most, uh, I don't know, cr crazy might be the, the best word to sum it up. It is based on an anime called Hunter Hunter. And usually a room escape, you think of a room, that's the kind of scale you're talking about, but not a Google, we think 10X, even though this is not a Google related event. But this was in a baseball stadium, Meiji Jingu, my baseball stadium, I believe. And uh, I could talk about that for a while as well, running around, actors as well, uh, tasks to complete, link to an app, great fun. So there's a lot, there are a lot of room escapes going on in here, here in Japan. And rather than just being a user, not, nothing wrong with enjoying room escapes, I wanted to use this, uh, use my passion and turn it into something I could use in the classroom, teaching with the students uh, and as well with other educators. So I've made quite a few room escapes and I was thinking of one we could do on the Spark today and hopefully one you can take away and adapt uh, for your own classroom. And uh, at least in the, we have a 20 minute spark, but I'm planning 10 minutes. So it's a bit tight to do the room escape itself, but you can expand it, you can shorten it, you can do what you like with it. But why room escapes? Well, what is a room escape basically first? A very brief introduction. Usually it doesn't have to be as you've just seen, but usually you're in a room, you have a bunch of riddles, a bunch of tasks to complete to eventually escape the room. Why should we do this potentially in the classroom with our students? Simply, it's fun. When you create a scenario, well, which I'll talk about later, people feel very much invested in it. They have a clear goal to get to, to escape or whatever the scenario demands. And uh, looking at uh, their peers, their fellow students getting excited and uh, getting really uh, engrossed into the scenario. It's fun for me to see it, uh, running it and from the position of doing the room escape. It is very adaptable, as I hope you will see today. You can change it however you like, as long as you can get from one step to the next, that process in the middle of how to get there, you can do whatever you like. And I'll give some tips on how to extend this today, if you want to do it in your own classroom, in whatever language you want, basically. That, that was my goal for this. My goal for this one was to make it uh, adaptable, as well as quite not so difficult for the person, the teacher or whoever's running it to run in terms of technical aspects. And hopefully after going through this, you will see that. Uh, and it's also great with room escapes, you can set the scene quite well. You can create whatever world you want. Uh, and that, that's what's pretty cool about it. There's a lot more to talk about, and hopefully I'll have a few minutes at the end to do it. This spark is going to be a little bit unique. Hopefully in the recorded video on YouTube, we'll have some timestamps. What's going to happen now is there will be 10 minutes where you will try it uh, for real. Please do try it right now. It is 
tough to do in 10 minutes. I'll be honest. And that's also the fun of room escapes. Uh, if you design the difficulty quite well, it's fun when everybody passes, but there's also a different kind of fun when only a part of uh, the people playing passes it. And I've done this, I've done room escapes a few times with the students. And even if they don't make it to the end, many students and players uh, really enjoy it. So this is a little bit, a little bit on the more difficult end, but we'll try it. I'm going to drop a link in the chat. Hopefully, uh, when we re-upload it to YouTube, we'll have the resources ready so you can try it yourself. And I am going to be silent for close to 10 minutes. What I would like you to do in the chat right now, I'm going to drop the link. I'm going to show you what it looks like as well, the first screen. Uh, please wait a moment. You're going to see a bit of an infinite uh, screen. Ooh. Please open that link you see in the chat. And once you do, you should see this screen. Please let me know if you do. OK, if I don't hear it, oh, see, I see some people in already. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ted. Thank you for letting me know. Here is the first task. I'm going to put the timer on for 10 minutes in a moment. And I'd like you to begin. If you need any hint how I would do this in the classroom, depending on the age range, I would say each group or each person. It's fun to do in a group if, if you want students to support each other. Each group will get three hints or two hints or one hint to move forward. Uh, I'm not going to put so much pressure on you. I will let you choose. You can keep silent for the 10 minutes and try your best. Or you can just uh, go into the chat or it's better to go take off the mic so I can understand where you are to try and help you. Uh, I'll give you a hint, a pre-hint, a pre-hint. Please try your best until the end. And escape the castle. That's all I'll say. So I'm going to start the timer. And when you are ready, please begin. Uh, I will keep this on the screen. And look through the document carefully. Uh, please mute, please. Uh, if you're watching this recorded, try yourself for 10 minutes. You'll see, hopefully see a timestamp in the video below. And just don't listen to me right now. If you don't want any hints, if you want to try with your own uh, ability. Uh, I'll give a little bit of, I'll give a few hints right now. The first thing you should really be doing is looking around the document. If you look just at the slide itself, you're not really going to understand what to do. There's another key place in this document where uh, you will see some information and that will tell you what to do and i'm going to work through this slowly during the 10 minutes actually i'm going to work through this very slowly so please uh ignore me for these nine minutes remaining if you don't want any hints and i'll talk through this uh how the things i thought when making this uh, and what to do uh, I like, I don't know if metadata meta meta is quite the right word, but I like getting data from places you wouldn't necessarily think to get it from. And on this particular slide, it's nice, it's strikingly visual. I don't know if this is a regret. It's called Escape from Castle Ramsey, and you're actually going into the castle. So, you know, <laughs> this, this, this person is on a mission. He wants to go in and then escape, I guess. Uh, that's uh, the scenario for this one. But as you can see, there are many pictures. Be careful with this. Some of the younger students uh, don't know what a Google Doodle is. And if you're teaching an English class, you can talk about the word Doodle, kind of like a, a, an image kind of thing. And then you can go into what they are and some great examples, as I'm sure a lot of you know over the years, some amazing, especially video game referenced uh, Google Doodles. So once they realize that, the first thing they'll do before reading the title actually is click around. And that's great. But when you start clicking around, you begin to realize that everything's the same. It's a document with find the key. And what will happen uh, with this uh, is they'll click one. They'll just click one and, and they'll go crazy. Not go crazy, but they'll, they'll start doing something. And this is a bit of a uh, look before you leap. You should be looking out before uh, you do this. If you look at the title, it says, welcome, Google's first doodle was. 
uh, if you wanted to make it like a full proper set of what was Google's first doodle, you can of course translate this into whatever you want and whatever language you want if you were to use it. So they have to know what a doodle is. Now, I go into this not saying anything. I'll just give them the link and go. And for them to, to realize what to do, to realize to look at the title, to realize to move one step forward, it's tougher, it's harder. And you can, depending how uh, the abilities of the students, you can give them nudges along the way. But I encourage you at least once to try not saying anything. Uh, because it's harder at the start. The start, you'll, you'll be worried as a teacher, you'll think they're using a lot of time. But once they break that first puzzle, they'll feel really excited and realize, uh, oh, wow, I can do this. And even if they don't get to the end, that feeling really stays behind. And they, after doing this with most of my students, they said, we want to do this every lesson. I wish I could. So what, what I'd encourage them to do is Google. Uh, Google first doodle. And you will get, well, this on the first page, depending on the country you're in, the, the results might be slightly different, but that's what you'll get. It's the Burning Man from the Burning Man Festival. Uh, and so you'd click that. Okay. Next, you will see the title directly when clicking the document. And it says, find the key. Okay, you need to find the key. It's a castle. You can choose whatever you want to find. And what a lot of students will do, especially students learning in an English class, they'll try and translate this. And it is Latin. I wouldn't recommend translating this uh, because they won't get much useful information out of it. And the key for and it's 11 pages long. And the key I want the students to understand and learn about is that, uh, especially in my computing classes, when something feels kind of troublesome, and long-winded, there's probably a better way to do it. And especially in computing and programming, especially using uh, sheets, usually that's the case. That's a lot of the time why we use these kind of uh, programs, these, uh, these applications. It's in order to make our lives easier, and it's in order to make bigger tasks uh, shrunk down into smaller tasks. So what they have to realize here, and hopefully I've done my job and taught them, is the find function. So on a on a Chromebook or on Windows, it's Control F, or on a Mac, it's Command F. And what do they need to find? That's why I chose the word very carefully, F for find. Uh, and so it's find the key. They can type the key if they want, but usually they just type key. And once you've done that, amongst all this Latin, you will see some English. And I've written the key just in case a student types the key. The key is below, go to the website. I had this in the first paragraph at the beginning. Uh, a student found it just by looking through the document. So uh, I've kind of tucked it into the middle here. So we copy this and we go. This is a great uh, application from Google. It's the Google Recorder. I have a Pixel. I have a Pixel 7 personally, and I've used it with the Pixel 6 as well in previous Pixels. And it's a great app as a recorder itself. I could go on and on about it. You've got the text, uh, the automatically generated text. And more recently, you can, it's actually color coded. You can see uh, what's actually, what might be talking, what might be other sounds. I could go on and on about the versatility and how great of a tool it is. Back it up to the cloud as well. Pretty much everything you can imagine can be done here. However, this is a room escape. So I was very happy implementing this into the room escape. When they saw, when you, if you try this with your students and they see, oh my God, there's a sound file, what do I do? They get really excited and it's really fun. So the one thing I would say about this is the automate, automatically generated text on the right is amazing. It's great, but for certain things, it can be difficult to automatically generate. And some students will be, will not listen to the audio. You will get all the answers if you listen to the audio. I've got a little, I see my name here is spelled differently, little things like that. So just bear that in mind uh, when you are doing a task like this. I talk about my love of chicken, my secret my secret love of chicken, my love of KFC, et cetera, et cetera. And then I go into uh, the second half, which tells them a URL to go to. Depending on the digi digital literacy skills of your students, uh, be careful with uh, speaking out URLs. Also. Uh, the the NATO code, the N for November, M for mother, that kind of thing. It can help students uh, understand the letters better, but some students don't know that, so they will type in November. So just be very careful when doing URLs. 
yeah, when you listen to this file, we don't have time now. When you listen to this file, uh, you will ask you to go to tinyurl.com forward slash Castle Ramsey. Great. And it's good you can choose the name of the URL. I, I recommend if you do, do have the chance to generate a custom named URL to make it something relevant. Not too easy, not too hard. And you will get this form. There's two minutes left. I will do a quick recap of this in the last few minutes. Uh, but this is more talking, you know, developers commentary, more talking about what I was doing. The rat. Great job. You've overcome many challenges in Castle Ramsey. As you open the main exit of the castle, you vaguely hear someone shouting at you from deep inside the castle. Wait, second, words, audio. Ugh. And that's it. Please write any message you would like to share with your fellow educators or students. You can edit this form how you like. Well, it was really fun. Submit. Great job. You enjoy looking at the beautiful sunset in the distance. Thank you for playing Castle Ramsey. Ominous. The one thing I really enjoyed about this slide is a student found out and thought something feels wrong. Something doesn't feel quite right. Uh, this can't be the end. And that is the case. It is not the end. The key is this second word audio. A great thing to do with riddles and room escapes is once you've gone through enough of it, if you can somehow link to a previous resource that you've used, uh, it's, it's a great tip. The second word of this audio is everyone. That's the what you have to do next. So if you type in actually any message with everyone, I've set this up so that uh, with regular expressions, you any case, lowercase, uppercase, you can write a full sentence with everyone and this will work. And what you'll do is you'll type in everyone, you'll try to submit, but there's an error. One cool thing I like to do is put uh, errors, uh, messages into errors. We're going to talk about this in a moment, but we have about 15 seconds left. And I'm going to bring everyone back in in a moment, and we're going to go through it very quickly for the people who uh, were muted during, this, muted during this time. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. OK, then. Uh, welcome back. Thank you very much, Ted, uh, for your comments. That's very kind of you. I'm very happy. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, if you've skipped ahead in the YouTube video for those in the chat, let me give a quick recap of the room escape and how to get to the end in the last three minutes or so. You start off with this one, this slide over here. And the main thing to realize is Google's first doodle. You have to get the information on what to do from the title. Once you've done that, you go into here, find the key, and it's too long to go through everything. Some students will, uh, but given the time you have on this, it's pretty much impossible. This can take 10 minutes easily. And what you need to do is control F or command F for find. Uh, you'll find the key. Once you find the key, you will get uh, a rec an audio document, audio, audio file from Google Recorder. In this, you will get a URL that takes you to this one over here. Continuing from what I was talking about earlier, the key is wait second word audio. So you go back to the audio, find the second word, which is everyone. And I've set this up so that if you type in everyone, any sentence with it, you'll get an error that says the eighth, fifth, and 16th words of the audio. What that actually comes up to is find Ramsey's secret. When you see find Ramsey's secret, they should realize to go back to the document after some time because find the key, find Ramsey's secret. You type in Ramsey or secret, press enter. If it wants to work, oh no, this is the wrong document actually, it does want to work. Uh, this is the right document. You type in Ramsey and you will get here lies Ramsey, here lies Ramsey's secrets. You go to the form here. And then you will get the true ending. You put your name in a message to everyone, and it's great when one or stu two students do it and you say their names. And it's some people might think it's uh, they feel jealous or they feel this. It's oh, the general reaction is wow, how did they get that far? That's amazing. I want to try it again. And that's what I really love about room escapes. And that's the end. So quickly, very, very quickly uh, continue. One final slide here uh you can adapt it in many ways you can change the language to whatever you want you can increase the difficulty 
in this particular one, you can change the text into document, not to lorem ipsum. And you can explain what lorem ipsum is to the students uh, used for a lot of uh, text in, in websites. And you can you can change how the audio works as well. There's lots you can do with it. You can change it in whatever way you like. If you are interested in room escapes, creating some innovative ideas, perhaps come talk to me. Please contact me. And I highly recommend you try this in the classroom. For me, junior high school.